Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday Watch Along. So these are the videos we're going to talk about today or the individual education is about taking profits. And I know that uh, this is kind of like a dirty phrase in the crypto digital asset market. If you start talking about taking profits, you're not a diamond hand, you're a paper hands, your lettuce hands, you're weak. And of course, you're not here for everybody. And what happened to wag me? We're all going to make it. Well, here's the thing. When I'm taking profits, that's my personal choice. And that's what I want to do. I don't want you to round trip your bags. Now, of course, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do because it is up to you about what's important for you. Is this something that you want to do for yourself? Is this something for your kids, for your grandkids? Is this for legacy? What is this? So obviously, I can't answer all those questions. I'm not a financial advisor or anything that, of the sort. But I'm just here to give you a little overview of what my thinking is and where things are going. So first of all, before we get into this and uh, talk about uh, exit strategies and selling, all that good stuff, we did a video yesterday where we talked about there was some sell-offs going on and it was a little bit concerning just to see what's going on, but there was some additional information that I wasn't able to put out because I didn't know about it until like an hour after the video. So first of all, we can see that today, Bitcoin's at 67.7. 67,000, somewhere around there. And we haven't seen this price since last week. So it's the same thing. We go, we it's like we're kind of just in and out. And we're at 67, then we go up to 69, get back down to 67, 71, 72, everybody gets euphoric and it goes down. Look, this is the, the, the normalcy of the digital asset market. There's going to be some pretty big run-ups. There's gonna be some pretty healthy pullbacks. And that's just how it is. But we can see that the market itself, pretty red today. Uh, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. But you can see that, yeah, Bitcoin's down 2% in 24 hours, and some of the top 10 are doing pretty good. But if you go lower uh, into some of these altcoins, you can see that over 24 hours, some are not doing so good. SWE, 5% down, 5% for Litecoin, 7% for Near Protocol, 8% for ICP, almost 12%, well, excuse me, 5.6, and, and down the line. So altcoins usually get hit hard. Bitcoin takes a little bit of a brunt, but usually that's what happened. So yesterday, what was spurring this on, I was talking about guru selling. This is from a website called gurufocus.com. I linked this in the description. You can verify this information. You shouldn't rely on me. You should be doing your own research. So I give you these little data and tidbits so you can understand and actually make an informed decision or a more informed, better decision for yourself. And we just saw that Bezos here, he just put in, I think he just sold uh, $3 billion more as of Friday. And it's just interesting to note that, you know, as far as like when he is selling, and if this is confusing or a little bit over your head, just watch yesterday's video. I do a much more comprehensive uh, dig down into what's going on here. We're going to see that, you know, as of this year, he's been selling quite a bit in the last two pieces. Now, uh, S&P 500 and the stock has done tremendously well. So I would take profits as well. And I think uh, if we come down here, we can see that he's actually started to sell around the uh, $200 mark, which again, good for him. And I just talked about Jeff Bezos as the guru, but also Mark Zuckerberg pretty much doing the same thing. And what you might notice here is that when do these guys sell? Well, they sell when their stock's up, obviously. But they kind of what they do is they sell into strength. And this is some pretty good strength. And he did this in 2021. Pretty damn good year. Good for him. And nothing in 2022 or 23. And he's been starting up again in 2024, even though it hasn't been too much going into August, September, October. So there's those two data points. But also I saw this and I was I tweeted this out that, hey, Warren Buffett, depending on who you ask is one of the greatest investors of all time. And his cash pile has reached a record 325 billion in Q3. He sold 20, another quarter, another 25% of their Apple stock. That's, they are a net seller in the quarter selling 34 billion of shares. The first quarter they didn't buy back their own stock since 2018, meaning they sold it and no buybacks whatsoever. So maybe he's thinking something's going on. So what does Warren Buffett know? Well, if we wanna take a look at his cash pile, there it is. And when does it really start? Excuse me, start essentially March 2024, which is essentially when Jeff Bezos was doing some big, some big sell-offs as well as Mark Zuckerberg. So I don't know what's happening. People will remind me that yes, there is a presidential election. I'm well aware of that. And of course, traditional markets don't like ambiguity. So we'll see what happens in roughly day and a half. I have no idea. But 
I just wanted to warn everybody so people are prepared. I think there is a big disconnect when you give to people too much natural exuberance or over exuberance without giving them the facts on the other side. Because if you have uh, hope without, without real data points, there's no hope at all. It's actually soul crushing when things don't go your way. So this is why I give this information to you. So just remember though, you know, as bad as that all sounded, what happens after presidential elections? Same thing has been happened since Obama, since Trump, since Biden. Uh, we hit a bit of a sideways chop and then we hit all time highs after the year. So it all depends on geopolitical issues. It all depends on the Federal Reserve and macro. and also depends on the liquidity that's in the US market and global markets. So we'll see if the money printer keeps going on and uh, we'll go from there. Now, uh, before we get into the profits part, just know that I've taken profits along the way. This is why I talk about these things. And this is from my Twitter account, or X, as the kids call it these days. And this is, and what, what you may notice here is that the price today is 67,000, somewhere around there. And, you know, this was from May 23rd. And I said, hey, I took profits a couple of days ago, sorry. And that's when, then the price went down to 67,000. And here on March 31st, I took some profits again. Uh, match, I don't know, 29, 30, somewhere around there. And that was when the price was 65,000. So it's just kind of range bound. And again, I'm not telling you to take profits and do what you do because it's all about what is best for you. So let's get into this video. It's a watch along. And at the very end, I wanna add another indicator, which I think is pretty darn important. So we'll go from there. So let me make sure you can hear this. This was a video that we did September, 2022, if you can believe that. And it just took a look Let me rewind this. And there's gonna be some pretty shocking price memories. And we're gonna go down memory lane. So I like to do these every so often because I want people to understand how important it is to take profits and not just to be like, oh, you know, I'll just take profits and, or I won't take profits. Just, I'm giving you another view of it. So let's watch this video. This is a watch along. I'll be in the background. If you have questions, put them in the comment section. I will answer every single question that I possibly can. So let's take a listen. Make sure you can actually hear this the correct way. Off we go. Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob. And today we're going to talk about selling crypto. More specifically, what I will be doing with my crypto, when I'll be selling it, and the percentage and the amounts I will be selling uh, as things come up. So before we get started, we're going to go over a lot of things. Uh, we're going to talk about what everybody should know first, which is uh, how to define yourself as far as your trader type and know your exit. We're going to get some DCA examples. I'm going to talk about everything that starts with uh, Bitcoin, the Pi Cycle Top. Then we're going to get into altcoins and the things that we should be looking at, which is the NUPL, MVRVZ score, risk assessments, those types of things. And lastly, uh, we'll talk about uh, exchanges and the mentality to get through this. So first things first, what I want to share with you is a quick little story about the Dogecoin millionaire. And this was a great video from Graham Stephen. And he went and just uh, talked to this gentleman, Dogecoin millionaire, who invested uh, roughly $180,000 of his money into Dogecoin when there wasn't really even a penny uh, for quite a long time, quite, quite a long time ago. And it went from less than a penny, there's $180,000, turned into $1.2 million in roughly 69 days. Unfortunately, uh, as time went on, he did the uh, same mistake I think we all do, which is believing that it's going to go to the moon and it's gonna go to a dollar or $2 or whatever it was supposed to be. And unfortunately, as time went on, his portfolio uh, took a look and in uh, not too much time, it was down to $323,000. And that is, uh, this was uh, shot about three months ago or so, and I'm sure it's down even more so. Today, it is September 21st, Bitcoin's around uh, $19,000, Ethereum's around 1,200 and so on and so forth. So I want you to have this ingrained into your memory because Graham's gonna ask him a very simple question and he's gonna answer it. And I want you to remember exactly what he says. Just take a listen. Now, do you regret holding so long? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I'm human. Uh, yeah, I should have sold some. <laughs> so, yeah, that's an understatement. And actually, that 1.2 million actually ballooned up to 3 million before it crashed down to probably now around $200,000. So, remember, uh, you can write it all the way up and you can write it all the way down. 
The choice is up to you. Which leads me to my next point, which is there's a phrase I use a lot, which is time in the market is more important than timing the market. And it's very true. I mean, the longer that you're staying in, usually the better it is. But that's for a very broad time horizon. I will just remind you that uh, today it's 2022, uh, September, and uh, we are looking at a Bitcoin price of 18846 And as a reminder, uh, if you would have bought uh, in December 2017, the 16th of December, you would have been up 19,040, you would be down $1,000 right now on your Bitcoin. Again, it's all about your time horizon and how long you want to uh, expand yourself out. But along the way, there may be opportunities to uh, take some profits. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. And again, I can not stress this enough. I'm not a financial advisor. I cannot give you financial advice. You have to do your own research. These are just the things that I am actually doing. So if we take a look here. The thing that we really should be talking about is what everybody should know first, which is before selling or anything, you need to find, you have to define your trader type and you need to know your exit before your entry. What I'm talking about is this. There are many various types of traders out there and investors. There are scalpers. Uh, those just take seconds and they move very quickly. Day traders, minutes to hours. You have swing traders, which you can wait, they could open up a position, wait days. Position traders could wait uh, weeks or months, or then you got somebody like myself is like a cycle trader, which takes years to play out. Now, I kind of uh, go between position trader and a cycle trader uh, because I wait for quite a long time to unpack my bags as they were. And then also, if you want to just do a, a quick down and dirty example of, of profit, this is the most basic one you could probably think of. So let's just say you want to, and you want to know your exit before you get into it. This would be an example. You say, okay, I'm going to buy Bitcoin at whatever it is, $10,000. Bitcoin doubles its price to 20. I'm going to sell uh, about 11K, which is uh, in my initial position, plus a little bit of profit. And I'm going to let the $9,000 that I have into Bitcoin just ride. Maybe it goes up to a million dollars and becomes the reserve world currency. And I am loaded for the rest of my life. Maybe, but that is just uh, one example. And I will tell you this, uh, for the examples that I've used, the things that I've done, this was my exit strategy uh, last cycle. And uh, it was just taking fractals, just taking a look at uh, where things had gone in the past and extrapolated those numbers to see where they could potentially go. And some were wrong and some were pretty pretty solid on. Now, Ethereum was wrong. I thought I was going to, to uh, 10,000. And I would dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out. And unfortunately, I was only able to, to pick up the very first point and sold along the way, but not too much. Chainlink, uh, it was actually right. I thought it was it would go to $35. And I actually went to $51. And the problem with this one, I think everybody knows, is that unfortunately, I had a plan in place, but I didn't stick to my plan. And if I would have stuck to my plan, I would have made a lot more money uh, on selling off Chainlink because right now it's worth way less than $26. Bitcoin, again, I thought I'd go to, to uh, 150000 That didn't happen. Also, uh, EOS, that did not happen. I thought it would go to 30. That was a bad one. Cardano, I thought it would go to $3. It did, roughly. around. You know, I think it was uh, the all-time high was 297 there, December 3rd. So pretty right. And then Theta, I actually got that one right. Uh, I thought it would go to $10, and it went to $14. But So the, these are just the examples I used before. But I think, I think there's a better way. And I put that video out uh, not too long ago. And you can find this uh, on the uh, website at Dan Teaches Crypto which I took a look at cycle top callers, the pi cycle top, NUPL time and risk, and also the cycle bottom, MBRVZ, two year MA, 12 multiple and reserve risk to just get a better assessment of what could be considered the actual cycle top. But there's one more thing we really need to answer ourselves. And that is that what kind of investor uh, are you? Because you have to understand that the more conservative you are, the safer you are, but maybe not as great as returns. And this is the thing that I always struggle with. So as an ultra conservative type of investor, uh, that could be you, this is how I started out. 100% of everything I bought was in Bitcoin. And that was it. I didn't do any altcoins, nothing like that. As time went on, I got a little less ultra conservative and just a conservative. And I'd have Bitcoin about 90% of my portfolio, then 10% was Ethereum. And then you could go down that rabbit hole and go, well, I'm going to be a risk taker and I'm going to go 50% of Bitcoin and maybe 40% in the top 20. And then 10% could be 30 to number 1,000 of, of the cryptos and get really uh, down there. Or you could be just a total degenerate and just go, okay, Bitcoin, I know is the safest one, but I just want a sliver and everything else will be in like the uh, number 200 to 3,000 
S coins and things like that. So when you look at these, remember that uh, if you're getting into these investments, uh, the risk versus reward, uh, it is so a lot of these are very risky, but the reward are high. But then of course you have the chance of losing everything. And before you knock any of the uh, degenerate moves, I will just say this: we have two channels. Uh, this is Digital Asset News. The other one is Dan Degen. And so far, they've done so well. So Gensu Kishi, Everdome, Fame, and Sweatcoin. We just look, when we got into these prices, uh, Gensu Kishi was 0 0.01, uh, about a penny and a half. All-time high was $1.62. Not too bad. Everdome, Fame, Sweatcoin, so on and so forth. So the thing that you have to remember is when I'm getting into these, these cryptos, what is my risk versus reward? So in a, in the best way to... to, to uh, Take a look at that is to show you through a website called dcabtc.com and also uh, dca-cc.com. DCABTC, it only shows you Bitcoin. I'm just going to show you a, a quick example here. So let's just say, oh, for example, that uh, you have $100. Just real quick, everybody, uh, as I'm talking about this for that DCA site, I don't know if that site's even open anymore. I'm not for sure. Again, this video was shot in September 2022. That's why uh, the you know prices are so ridiculously low. So right now, I would just recommend that you just go to Ben's site. That part there for the dollar cost averaging tool to see where it is, is 100% free on the site. So if you're looking for Ben's website in the Cryptoverse, link in the description. If you want to sign up for the premium service, there's 10% off the first month. But again, I highly recommend you just use that DCA tool that I'm using right here because I think it's fantastic uh, just to kind of see where you're going. All right, let's take a listen. And uh, you want to purchase $100 worth of Bitcoin uh, every week. And if you do that for the last six months, uh, you would be down almost a percentage uh, just buying things because the market's awful. But let's just back this up for a second. Let's just go over the last, I don't know, five years. Five years, and we go five years, and we accumulated. And in actuality, if you would have done that $100 every week, you would get $26,100. Uh, your total value uh, for Bitcoin would be 105000 and which is not too bad. However, at the top, it will have been 162,000, depending on when you actually sold. So that's just that's just Bitcoin itself. What I want to show you, of course, is that's pretty good. It's a very safe, safer play in the most uh, uh, volatile market. But what if you can do that with Ethereum? That's why I like this website, DCA-CC. I'm going to do this. Let's do uh, $100 again, and we do that on a weekly basis. And I picked uh, January 12, 2018 which was uh, one of its highs back in the last cycle to today. And I'm going to click on calculate. And you can just see right here that, yeah, it was a little bit riskier, Ethereum being what it is. Uh, but actually, if you take a look at it for the, at the peak, you would have invested $20,000 just like we did with Bitcoin. But the balance in fiat or cash would be $339,000. let us take it one step further. Let's go to Cardano, the same thing. Let's, let's change this up. Let's put $100 every week from same time frame, January 12, 2018 to September 19th, 2022. And if we do that, and then of course we calculate, we're gonna see that in all honesty, we could have done pretty well. And if we go up here to the very tippy top, we would have invested 19,100, somewhere around there. And we would have had $706,480, which is not bad for five years of work at the very top. Now, it's worth much less. And the problem that we have is people always talk about diamond hands and never selling. And they're just going to give this all to their, their, their grandkids and it's generational wealth. Look, if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm not here to judge you or tell you what to do. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. However, when I think about these things, I think that's not what I'm going to do, and these are not my goals. The things that I do are what I do. And of course, you can take this information and roll it into your research to do your best thing for whatever uh, best suits you as far as investments. So I also, when I take a look at this, when everything goes up, you start to think, oh, well, I just need to keep going up and going up because that's what happens in markets, right? Well, no. However, there is an opposite thought process, which is, this is uh, from CNBC, and it talks about how the chart below shows how if you invested $10,000 into the S&P 500 index for a 20-year period between 1999 and 2018, this is how it would have performed. If you would have just left it there, never touched it, 
your $10,000 would be a whopping $30,000, which is pretty good for doing absolutely nothing. I'll be honest with you. And the average annual return is 5.6%. But if you would have just missed 10 of the best days, 10 of the best rallies that were out there, your value would be less than half of what it is. So your average annual return is about 2%. Miss the 20 best, 20 best days, negative 0.3. Miss three best days, and so on and so forth. So again, when we talk about time in the market is more important than timing, that is true. The thing that we have to remember is that at some point, we're going to need to sell, at least for me. That's not for you. And I will just uh, um, finish up with this. Those examples I gave you with Cardano <clears throat> and Ethereum and Bitcoin, and uh, even this one with S&P, uh, things look pretty rosy. But remember, it's still a risky market, no matter where what you get into. Here's two examples, a dash of salt. So these are two crypto projects that were pretty prevalent in the last uh, 2017 bull run. And you can see Dash did an amazing job of going from uh, 11, gosh, three, four dollars, all the way to 1,000, almost 1,500 dollars. And then of course, what did it do after that? Not much at all. And then off we go, and that's absolutely nothing. And there's a, a worse example here, which is Salt. Salt was a lending platform, did very well. SEC got involved, and uh, there was a lawsuit, and uh, it was almost at $15. And what has it done after that? Not too much. So remember, things that you do could be extremely risky depending on what you get into. So having said all that and the warnings and things like that, let's talk about how everything starts with Bitcoin, the Pi Cycle Top. So if you're not familiar, we did a pretty in-depth video about the Pi Cycle Top. Again, find that at uh, Dan Teaches Crypto. And when we took a look at it, Pi Cycle Top was created in 2019. Retroactively, or retrospectively, it could call the top almost to a T. And then it almost called the top in 2021, a little bit off, but that's just how it is. So what I want to take a look at was, well, how accurate was it? And of course, if you're not familiar, Pi Cycle Top uses the 111-day moving average and a newly created multiple of the 350-day moving average, uh, which is 350 times two. When the 111-day moving average moves up and crosses the 350-day, we see that it coincides with the price of Bitcoin peaking. And I just thought about that. I go, maybe, let's see how accurate it actually was. So here's the Pi Cycle Top and how it's called the top in every one of the cycles. And just for reference, when I talk about cycles, I mean the four-year cycles for Bitcoin, everything starts with a halving. The first one was uh, 2012, you have a halving and you get an all-time high and there's a dip and there's a reset. And the same thing happened again in 2016, there's a halving, uh, 2017 all-time high, a dip and a reset. And then coincidentally, the same thing happened in 2020, we had a halving all-time high and we're seeing a major dip and probably another reset in 2023, but I think We'll be back on track in 2024, 25, 26, 27, as things kind of work themselves out. So when we take a look at, again, the Pi Cycle Top, the first one, the first uh, cycle, it actually was very close. Not perfect, but pretty close. So you can see here that uh, this point, the lower part here, where it has uh, the price of $141, that's what it retroactively, retrospectively took a look at and go, that was the top. But actually, it wasn't. It was $214. So that was the first one. The second one is even more strange. You had it called it out at uh, 1,090 when in actuality it was 1184. So pretty darn close. And this was the only time you had a double top in roughly the same time period, the same cycle in 2013. So it did in April and it did in December, which is actually, let me rephrase that. It said in November 29, 2013 was the Pi Cycle top. And then in April 2013 was the Pi Cycle Top, which is very interesting uh, because in 2021, the Pi Cycle Top was in April 11th, 2021. But the actual top was in November 2021. Just something to think about. So second one, now here comes the third one. In 2017, it nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. And uh, there is no higher. It's uh, hit it at 19,326, so roughly around there. So uh, I think no one could fault you for selling a little $100 off here and there. And that's a good one. And then the fourth one, of course, like we just talked about, April 11th, 2021, the Pi Cycle Top called the top at 60,148 when the actual top was November 8th, 2021 at 67,000. 
492. So again, this are, these are still good numbers, but you have to remember this. Everything starts with the Bitcoin pump and then alt pump. So I took a look at the historical snapshot of 11th of April, 2021. In Bitcoin, the price was 60,000. Ethereum was 2,100. Finance coin was 525. XRP, $1.36 and so on and so forth. And what I did was I took a look at the top ones and just compared what the Pi cycle top, top price points were compared to what they actually were on different dates. So Bitcoin, of course, April 11th uh, was 60,000. The real one was on November 8th and it was at 67,000. So 11% 11, 11 different from the top. So even if you would have sold here, you'll only be 11% away from the top. Not too bad. Ethereum, you were off quite a bit, actually. By April 11th, it was 2157. November 8th, 2015, that was 55%. Binance Coin was only 22% off, not too bad. XRP, 24%. Cardano was way off. Uh, April 11th was 127 and actually peaked at 296. That's a 60% difference. However, Polkadot, Litecoin, and Uniswap were pretty darn close, 23, 34, 30. And the biggest one that was the, the biggest outlier was Solana. It was 2793, the price cycle price. Uh, the real all-time high price, 259 on November 6th. So that would have been an issue. However, this is what I always think about, or I'm starting to think about a lot more now, which is DCA in and DCA out. I'm in a dollar cost average in, like we all know everybody talks about on YouTube just about ad nauseum. But I think that's just half of the equation. You have to dollar cost average out. And what I'm going to do and I hit that pie cycle top on the next one because we had a long way to go. We have a very, very long way to go when that 111-day moving average crosses over. I will be selling 50% of all of my crypto. And I'll tell you exactly why later. I'll be selling 50% of all my crypto. Does that mean that I will miss out on some on some tops, uh, some various ones? Yes, like uh, maybe Ethereum Cardano or something that's, that isn't even in the top 100. Uh, I could definitely be, be missing out, but that's okay because it's, all about averages. So I'll be selling 50% of my crypto. And then I'll be waiting for some different signs and I'll sell another 20% and then 10% later down the road. I will not hit all the tops. And my goal is to hit 60 to 80% of the tops. I will not hit 100%. I will not buy at the absolute bottom. It just doesn't work like that. And it's gonna take a lot of pressure off me. Last time, I think it was just dumb luck of what I got to. And I think this time, I'm gonna take a little bit more uh, look at some indicators, but remember this, everything starts after the Bitcoin Pi cycle top, which we're gonna play into uh, right now. So once again, when the Pi cycle top hits, I'm gonna take a look at not just the Pi, Pi cycle top indicator, because that is the first one I'm gonna look at, but there's various ones I'm definitely gonna look at. And that is the net unrealized profit and loss. I'm gonna also take a look at historic risk levels, MVRVZ score, and the, well, multiple, just to get a bearing. Now, I don't wanna to do too much analysis and get paralysis by analysis. I just wanna look at these and go from there to see if I'm in the right ranges. Again, I'm not here to time the absolute top at 100% or time the absolute bottom. So I'm just trying to get close as I possibly can. So retrospectively, if we look back at, uh, we, we know the Pi cycle top, the top was uh, April 11th, 2021. So if I was to, on that day, take a look at the NUPL, let me just uh, blow this up here. And what I like about this, these are, uh, this is from Look Into Bitcoin. And these charts are available for free. They're high quality. I love to use them, first of all, because they're free and they're great. And it makes things very simple, right? When you're in the pink range, it's probably a good idea to, because this is when everybody's uh, greedy, probably a good idea to take a little bit of profits. Maybe, and also in the orange uh, part as well, optimism anxiety. When it gets down to the, the green area, probably a, a decent time to think about accumulating. We talked about this uh, at length on the channel. but. If we take a look here, we can see this expanded view and we can take a look all the way back to 2010 and uh, go forward. So what I'm gonna do here is of course, we know that the Pi cycle top was uh, April 11th. So I will uh, zoom back in so you can see it in all its glory and just take a look at where we're at. So again, if I was looking at the Pi cycle top and I think, okay, April 11th, uh, the 111 day moving average crossed over. So this could be uh, the time to sell. Maybe I'll take a look at the NUPL just to make sure. And just so everybody's on the same page. Uh, and again, we, we covered this at uh, length on the last video, I have a plan, but just to make sure everybody's here. When we take a look at uh, the NUPL, the indicator is derived from market value and realized value. Market value is the current price of Bitcoin 
multiplied by the number of coins in circulation. Realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved. So you've got some whales that haven't moved them for quite some time when Bitcoin was 100 bucks. So by subtracting realized value from market value, we calculate unrealized profit and losses. Unrealized profit and loss estimates the total profit and loss, paper losses in Bitcoin held by investors or profits. So again, as time goes on and prices uh, fluctuate, you can see this is a pretty good one to take a look at. So again, if I'm taking a look at April 11th, I'm in the orange zone, which so I could say, okay, well, it's not down here and it's not in this uh, uh, freebie zone or point of no return, capitulation, hope, optimization. And uh, yeah, this could be one. Now I'm all the way not into the red zone, but we haven't seen that for quite some time. So if I was looking at this, I'd be like, okay, that's a second indicator that looks like it might be a good chance for me to start to take profits. Also, if we take a look at the historic risk levels. Now this is from Ben's website into the Cryptoverse. And it's a, it's, it's a great website, links in the description. It is a paid website, but it's worth it. I'm gonna tell you why. Because we take a look at these risk levels, it's another indicator which could say, okay, this looks quite interesting. So let me reset the zoom again. Again, the risk levels, as they go up, the higher they go, the more risky it is. So it's a good idea to think about taking profits when we start to peak, especially above the 0 0.9 reference range. I think we can all agree there. And there's only been one, two, three, four, five points in history in roughly 12 years. So again, if I wanna take a look at, I wanna zoom in to this area around the uh, April, 2021, where are we here? So February, March, April 11th. I'm actually at the Bitcoin risk level is 0 0.7, almost 0 0.8. Again, back here, it looks like it was pretty risky. However, we didn't see the pie cycle top yet, even though it was a little risky, but it's high enough for me to say, okay, it's not below five, it's not below four, it's pretty risky. Again, that would be a check for me to move on. Another one would be the MVRVZ score. So I take a look at this and the MVRBZ, it's a Bitcoin chart you uses blockchain analysis to identify periods when Bitcoin is extremely over or undervalued. It takes the, the market value, price of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of coins to the realized value, rather than taking the current price of Bitcoin, realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it's last moved again. And the Z score is a standard deviation that pulls out all the extremes. So again, if we take a look here, let me just blow this up so we can see it. I'm looking for, again, April, February. Again, February was, it was a good time, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't too great at that time. I think we're, we're playing around 48, 50,000. So it could have been okay. But uh, down here, March, where are we? March, March, March. April, April 11th. So the Z-score again, above five, not in the orange zone. So I'd say, well, that doesn't really tick what I uh, thought it would, but I've got a couple other indicators, so that's not bad. And lastly, I'll take a look at the Puel multiple, just to be sure. And the Puel multiple looks at the supply side of Bitcoin, uh, as far as miners and the revenue. It's calculated by, by dividing the daily issuance value of Bitcoins by the 365 day moving average. It uses the upper red band of the chart to show when miner revenues in, in USD terms are significantly higher. Okay, so again, if we take a look at, ooh, let's see, right around here. And we go to the April point, uh, April 11th, and almost in that uh, red band right there. So I would say yes. So again, if I took the Puel multiple, which is just for proof of work for minor things like that, and the RVC score, eh, not so much. The risk level, I would say yes. And UPL, and of course, the Pi cycle top is the one that is it. So at this point, I would say yes, I would have sold if I would have uh, done it correctly. And this is what I'll be doing moving forward. So that would take care of the part for Bitcoin. Now, the next question that you may have is, well, that's great for all these things, but what about for the alts? Because it's a little bit different uh, as we just, just saw. We can do the same exact thing. And the way that we can do that is using Ben's website. So did you know that the Pi Cycle Top, 11 day moving average, uh, crossed over the 350 day moving average times two, can be done with Ethereum. It can be done with Binance Coin, XRP, Cardano, Solana. No, all these things. And it can be done in one place on Ben's website into the Cryptoverse. So again, we want to take a look at all of them. So let's take Ethereum. Let me, uh, there we go, Ethereum. So the Pi Cycle Top for Ethereum doesn't really work out too hot, honestly. 
because uh, it's telling you that it crossed over. You're looking at 21st of May, 2017, when the ETH price is 148. But in all honesty, it went to over almost $1,500. And the last one it did, eh, not too bad. 7th of March again, 17, almost $2,000. So it'd still be 50% off. That's not too great. So again, what I would do is I would say, well, because remember, everything starts with Pi Cycle Top and Bitcoin shooting up to the stratosphere and then come the alt. So what I would do is I would just wait and see, well, maybe we'll take a look at the NUPL. Let me change this to Ethereum. And what I want to do, actually, let me reset the zoom. You'll notice here for the NUPL, over on the look, look into Bitcoin, it has on the right-hand side, it has the Bitcoin price. On the left-hand side, it has percentages as far as how much it's gone up or down. And this, of course, will be 100% of max range or where we were at the very, very tippy top. And of course, negative almost 50% or 42% uh, down here. However, take a look over here for uh, Ben's. For the NUPL, it's a little bit different. Uh, we've got the market cap over here and the NUPL ratio, which goes up to positive 0 0.5 and down to negative 3. Okay. We can see as we zoom out that uh, the baseline level is around, um, well, of course, we have 0 here, and it goes down pretty pretty negatively across the board. But if we take a look here, again, what we want to take a look is we want to see around after uh, April of 2021 and what happened after there. So if I was me... Now we take a look at this. Again, I can't take a look forward because I would be looking at this in real time. So let's just say I'm back in April 11th right here at 0 0.479. And I think if I look back, I say, well, the top last or beforehand was 0 0.6. So maybe I want to get a little closer, maybe 0 0.55 or somewhere around there because maybe that's not it because I know that Bitcoin tops and then the alt start the top so anything after april 11th i'd probably say it might be a good time so let's see here 0 0.51 eh, maybe not around here 5152 so right around here what's this the 3rd of may 2021 0 0.5 i'd probably want to get rid of 50 percent of my ethereum at this point so 0 0.56 uh that was a uh, 3rd of may 2021 if we take a look here i don't know uh, 3rd of may where would that be not bad, 3,500. So we missed it by about a thousand, roughly. And uh, again, I will never hit the top, but I think it's a good way just to take a look at things of of where we're at and uh, go from there. Again, once I get 50%, if it goes up some more, let's say it's uh, across another, you know, it goes up another 10, 20%. Well, I can sell another 20% later because I have things in reserves. I will never sell all my crypto, but I'll probably sell a big chunk. So that is that part. And then also, if we take a look at uh, MVRVZ score, let's see what that would tell us. Well, again, we're at 2021, and this is Bitcoin. I need to change that uh, to Ethereum. Da -da -da. Right here, let's zoom in. So, well, this looks tasty. See this one right here? Again, same thing, 13th of March. I'm looking at these at these points. If I'm looking at anything above four, this would all be good times to, to sell. Again, taking a look at different charts and different graphs just to get an idea of where I'm potentially at. Historical risk levels, let's take a look at ETH. And let's blow this up a little better so we can see it. So again, above 0 0.9 is a good time. When do I get zero? Okay, 10th of May, the same thing. And yeah, 3,400, 3,500, again, not going to time the top, but it's okay. And then lastly, well, the Puel multiple <laughs> would have worked uh, when it was proof of work, but now it's proof of stake. So that just kind of goes to the wayside. Same thing with Cardano and so on and so forth. So again, you can use anything that you want to, but it's putting together these different charts just to give you an idea of where things are going to say, okay, Okay, that looks like uh, it's a good time to potentially sell. That looks like a good time, it's a good time. And over time, and using uh, multiple pieces of data, you can make the best decision uh, for yourself. Again, this is not financial advice. These are the things that I'm going to be doing very closely as we move forward. And there was one last piece that I forgot to talk about, which is this. I believe in the four-year cycles, like we talked about uh, at length. However, that doesn't mean that this will happen in 2025. It may happen in 2024 or even 2023, or maybe even 2026 or seven, I don't know. But 
the thing is you have to be aware of is you have to be conscious of the changes that could potentially take form. Don't get married to one idea like I did in the past and say like it has to happen at this, it has to happen at this way. Just take a look at the data. And when the data changes, you change. But the things that I see right here, these are things that I will still look for. Picycle top, MBRVZ, well, multiple, well, for Bitcoin. And of course, the risk factors. If we can take a look at all those things, I think we can get a better understanding of when to potentially sell. Now, leading me to my last two points, which are exchanges and the mentality. So uh, real quick, there's a link in the description, or if you're watching this on Dan Teaches Crypto, it'll be a link underneath this video, which says uh, the exchanges. Here are the exchanges that I use. If you want to use any of them for uh, purchasing said crypto and dollar cost averaging, I use four. I'm in America, so uh, that's what I got. FTX, Kraken, Coinbase, and KuCoin. And then lastly, I just want to talk to you real quick about the mentality. To remain calm is a superpower. Bruce Lee said that, and it holds true today. And when you see in my videos and you see that we lose 20% or 50% or whatever, I don't know, whatever it is of the day, I'm pretty much the same way I am right now. I just try to stay calm because I know that this is a natural progression. For some people, it's a little bit more difficult. And for those people, I'd recommend uh, this website which it is the dailystoic.com. And the thing was great about that, it's free. And you just sign up right here, sign up for the daily email, and it'll just give you some, some perspective from some of the greatest philosophers uh, in the entire world uh, has ever known throughout history. Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, all the different Greek philosophers that uh, really have uh, guided me a long way. And here's the last, this was the last email I got, which was today. And of course they get, they get every day. And tell me if this doesn't, maybe ring true with you. Temperance. Temperance isn't about elimination, going without or removing something bad. It's about moderation, finding the right amount of something. Aristotle's famous metaphor of the golden mean, the idea that virtue usually sits between two vices. Courage is between cowardice and recklessness. Confidence between crippling self-doubt and blinding arrogance. Hard work between workaholism and laziness. And also chasing money between just having being financially stable. And it's threw that in there because that's pretty much what we're doing right here. I don't want you to get burnt out. I want you to have that mentality to go, okay, I can take my profits. I can move forward. Not a big deal. <sighs> and then there's some other parts here, but I'm going to let it go. So uh, this video is going a little bit long, but uh, that is it for today. So look, I know there's a lot of information to digest. And uh, these are the things that I'm going to do. Not something that you specifically will have to do, but maybe you could uh, put that into your repertoire of things that you may be doing along the way. But that is it. So first of all, thanks so much for stopping by. All right, that one did. That one did. That one did go pretty long. So this is just another reminder again that uh, it's great that we can buy. It's great that we can buy these dips. It's great that we can move forward. But it's the information of those sell indicators of those different uh, things that we took a look at of where I'm going to go now. The reason why we took a look at that, again, was to take a look at what happened in 2013, 2017, and 2021, because as those indicator hits, they're going to hit again. At some point, they won't get all the way to the top, or they won't get super, super duper overheated, maybe, but you can kind of track things as they get a little bit crazy, and maybe you can make a more informed decision of when you want to actually sell, instead of just going, you know what, eh, today's a good day, let's just give it a roll. So there's something like that. So let's just go over real quick. I put Everything that we just talked about, all the different sell indicators, I put those, there's a link in the description. And we're talking about the NUPL, the Pi Cycle Top. We're talking, what the heck is this? Oh, the risk levels, this is pretty important. Uh, also risk levels for altcoins. Let me just do this one. And then NVRBZ score and a well, multiple. But this is the one that I wanted to add to the mix. This will be a new one. This is indicator dashboard. I like this one's from Ben for a specific reason. If you're like me, you like things to be as easy as possible. So like with this, it takes a look at the stuff we just talked about. <clears throat> well, fear and greed index, logarithm regression, Bitcoin risk, total market cap, well, multiple, MVRVZ score, price, market cap to thermal cap, I don't know what the heck that is. And then of course the social aspect of it is retail here. Well, how can we tell? Well, maybe the YouTube subscribers and views, maybe the Twitter followers and, and uh, engagements. So you can kind of base that all together. And as of right now today, the summary is 0 0.25, somewhere, no, excuse me, 0 0.285, which is very low. What did that look out like in the last bull run? 
Good question. Let's just go back 23, 22. And then you can see that, yeah, in November 2021, this is, this is October, things were totally overheated. Again, this is why we take a look at the, at the history to see where we were at to know where we are going. Now let's go all the way back to 2017. What did it look like back then? Again, taking a look at an aggregate of all these indicators. That's 2018, genius. All right. Oh, yeah, there we go. So again, we can see that in January 2018, Bitcoin topped out in December 17th, December 15th, somewhere around there, 2017. But it was alts that hit their all-time high, especially Ethereum in January 2018. We can see again, same deal. Social metrics are off the chart, on-chain metrics and price metrics. So I would urge you to uh, put this into your, your basket of uh, indicators just to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Again, I'm not going to hits the all-time highs. I'm not that good. I don't think anybody's really that good unless they're just lucky. And this is what I'm going to use. So again, a new PL, there it is. Where were we at today? Well, actually, a little bit on the higher side. I don't think this is updated. Is it the second? It's the third. So this is going to be a laggard because, you know, it'd be great. That's why, like, all these ones that it's, it's on, uh, now it's called Bitcoin Magazine Pro. It used to be, used to be uh, looking into Bitcoin, but all these things are also in Ben's website. So it's like on the daily. Pi cycle top, how, because again, remember we talked about as they cross over, did pretty good in 2017. Again, this was created in 2019. And 2021, eh, April, not too bad. But how far away are we? We're pretty damn far apart. So I don't see this crossing over anytime soon. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Historic risk levels. And I like this one. Don't tell Ben I showed you this. Nah, he doesn't care. Maybe. These are the, 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 the risk levels. And if you're curious, like, well, where could the price go? Well, I'm not good at price predictions, as you may have seen from that video. But if we can take a look, let's just take a look at Bitcoin for the risk levels themselves. I want to see this one. So if we're going by fiat... Damn, 67,000 today? Did we just lose a thousand bucks? Sundays, what are you gonna do? But as it goes up from a, a price point between zero, meaning almost no risk, 19,000, to one, which is the highest risk you can get, 184,000. Interesting, right? What about, what about, what about Solana? Because that one's, oh, the risk level. That's, I think, one of the highest because it's done so well. If you're looking at the risk levels, it's a 158 today. Wasn't it 170 like 24 hours ago? Again, the zero level. Ah, come on. The zero level is 18 bucks. That'd be nice if it went down there. And the overheated level would be 745. Me personally, I'll be getting out around 0 0.85 because <laughs> I don't have it in me to to stick around and maybe it hits this and maybe it doesn't. And again, it's all probabilities. So it depends on what you wanna do. And that's it for today. I mean, for that piece. So like, look, if you, first of all, thanks for hanging with me for this much time. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff. What we just talked about, all those indicators, links in the description. Watch the video again.